A very good morning to all of you and how many times you are listening to so many words. You have people talking around you, you have people giving opinion, you have people saying that your problem is this or that, that you can do this or that. How many times you are listening to people telling you that there's no solution for what you are going through, that someone already died with the same problem. Uh, advisors are already saying that you have to close the door of your business. Uh, you were told that the best thing to do, it would be to get divorced, to put an end to this relationship. You have been listening so many voices, the voice of your doctor who came to you after the exam and, and several uh, treatments, the doctor told you there's nothing, nothing else that can be done in order to solve this problem. And you have been listening and, uh, to so many words around you that you do not know what else you can do. It's one word worse than the other. And when you look to your situation, when you look to your life, you see that uh, there's, there's no hope because once problems, they came, uh, you try to fight back, you tried to find a solution. And when you try to even to ask help to others, the words are not the best one, the best ones. Do you, you see that uh, apparently, there's nothing else that can be done to transform your life. Listen to me. I'm here to let you know that there is a solution for that problem. There is a way for you to get rid of this suffering. And I'm talking to you who are at this very moment depressed. I'm talking to you who is thinking in giving up on your dreams, on your life. I'm talking to you whose life is and has been upside down, whose marriage is going down the drain. I'm talking to you whose family is completely broken and even those who you love the most, they are not there for you. Listen to me, there's hope for you. And we are here exactly to show you what you can do in order to change this situation around. If you want, you can give us a call to our helpline center, 0296029837, and you will talk to one of our pastors. You will ask for advice, for help. There's someone, if you want, you can even send us an SMS. You can send us a message, a text message, or you can go to our website, uckg.org.au, and there you can find the pastor's online platform. Meanwhile, pay attention to this testimony, what happened with the life of this person when they believed in what I'm telling you to do. Hello, today is Saturday, 11th of June, 2022. It seemed like a normal video, but little did this young woman know that her life would change from that day. I decided not to suffer in my love life. This decision was based on a choice I witnessed in my childhood. After seeing my parents fight daily, they had an unstable marriage and a lot of mistrust. It was a very heavy environment as I watched those fights. We felt lonely. I especially felt distressed about the situation. I would cry suddenly without a clear reason why. I would not sleep properly. I had a lot of nightmares. When I went to bed and managed to have some sleep, I only had one particular nightmare, the way I would end my life. Voices with various thoughts stayed in my mind, to the point of trying to end my life for real. My life was like this before I arrived at the Love Therapy Seminar. There, I decided to make the right choice, to obey what I had been taught in the seminars. So, I began by forgiving and cleaning my inside, from the grudges I kept against my parents. 
I was a very spiteful young woman. I started removing those things out of me. I forgave myself. One day, the pastor told us that for us to be happy on the outside, in our marriage, we must first have the spirit of love, which is the Holy Spirit. So, I started seeking and emptying my heart from all that I felt. I said, my God, I need you. I must receive your spirit. And when the bishop determined from the altar, receive the Holy Spirit, I believed. I was not expecting to feel anything, but that word entered me like fire. And I knew everything would be different from that moment on. It was like God was saying to me, My child, I am with you now. Your life is in my hands. From that day on, I realized that my attitude changed. I became a peaceful person. After that, I went to university. I had gotten a degree and master's in nutrition with the Holy Spirit. I was now ready to make someone else happy because I was happy. Despite not having a boyfriend, I was already happy because the spirit of love dwells inside me. Even so, I decided to invest some time in learning about love education. What I could not see from my home, through the love therapy seminars, I learned. I came to the Temple of Solomon every Thursday with my notebook, like I was going to a proper school. I decided to do something for God that week. I went to help people during a Sunday meeting. There, I met a guy named Marcelo. We began working together and assisting people. We grew close and from that moment on, we started talking. This started to become a natural and peaceful friendship. However, it did not develop into anything more than that. I carried on with my purposes, doing what God will ask of me at any given time. I remained dedicated to learning more about intelligent love. I started fighting and persevering for a promise that was my right, as it was written in Psalm 68 verse 6. God set the solitary in families. I want to have this promise in my life. I was already willing and thinking about how I would have this promise. And then the campaign of Israel was announced. I started preparing my sacrifice. Having in mind that God's will will be fulfilled in my love life. I decided to be cheerful because if it was written, it will certainly happen in my life. I was so sure that God will honor me, so much so, I decided to record a video to prove it and to use it as a testimony in the coming future. Hello, today is Saturday, June 11th, 2022. I am here between Haddock Lobo Street and Alameda Santos the day before Valentine's Day. I am recording this because I believe God can change any impossible thing. If you are watching this video, it is because I am at the altar together with Bishop Renato, sharing with you what God has done in my life. I purchased the wedding invitation paper and made my envelope. I wanted this envelope to represent not only the surrender of my love life, but of my wedding day, which would be God's answer to me. I then went to the altar, full of happiness and peace. I was certain everything was now in God's hands. I stopped having fears or doubts. I had no anxiety or anything else. God was already working. What Vanessa did not know was that Marcelo, who she had met before, would reappear in her life. As time passed by, I matured, and eventually, Marcelo reached out to me again. He sent me a message, and we re-established our friendship. After three months, he invited me to take part in an event promoted by the Love Therapy, which was the Love Walk. There, I approached her for us to get to know each other better. I saw she had structure. 
a young woman who was already seeking God, respected and honoured by her mother, did not have any baggage and had never dated. In my case, it was the opposite from Vanessa. I started dating very early. I already lost hope in my first relationship. I can say that I gave up on love. I did not believe in anyone, in any woman. Because of that, I chose not to have any serious relationships. Then, the Holy Spirit revealed to me, do the opposite now. Do the opposite and first observe. Use your mind. Use your reason so you can find a person who will be by your side for the rest of your life. We did the walk together, shared our ideas and our future plans. We agreed with each other. On the day after the love walk, he asked me to date him. We began to participate in each other's plans. It was no longer me or her, but we started building our relationship to become one. Each meeting, each seminar was another step, another ingredient for us to fit well with each other. And on 5th of May, 2023, I booked our wedding at the church. What Vanessa had determined to happen, the day she saw by faith and the life she harvested from the altar. God put his hand in everything. Everything fell into place, our engagement, our projects, even our flat. Married people need a house of their own. And we got the flat. Today, with the Holy Spirit both in us, we overflow. We understand each other. We live well together. For me, the most crucial thing God can give us is his mentality. It gives us the power, no matter what comes our way. We understand what is happening and why it is happening. Thanks to the Holy Spirit and our surrender on the altar, I have everything I lacked in my childhood and did not see within my parents' marriage. We do not need to say anything. People around us clearly see God's presence in our marriage. Just as God works with faith, the devil works with doubt. Doubt is the main weapon of hell to weaken and destabilize people all over the world. We are bombarded daily by voices that come at us from all sides, with most carrying that invisible poison of doubt. What we have observed is that those who drink from this poison offered by the kingdom of darkness end up becoming insecure and terrified. The voice to whom we give ear will dictate our actions and reactions. The Japanese scientist and researcher Masaru Emoto, in one of his most intriguing experiments, proved that words have the power to physically influence everything that exists. Emoto placed three servings of cooked rice in three different glass beakers then covered them with water. Every day he would say, thank you, I love you, to one of the beakers. I hate you, you were a fool, to the second one. And the third he ignored completely. After a month, the result was surprising. The rice that received the kind words began to ferment, giving off a pleasant aroma. The rice in the second beaker, which received the negative words, became completely dark and rotten. And the third one, which was ignored, began to mould. Surely, this is thought-provoking. If a word caused such an effect with rice, can you imagine what this can do within a person? This is why we often see so many people overwhelmed by panic and fear, all because of a word they heard in one moment. Is it possible for a person to have peace when they have doubts? The only formula capable of shielding your faith is not listening to what might weaken you. Instead, feed yourself with the word that comes from God, as this generates certainty, conviction and strength. Consequently, even when facing a difficult period, you will not be shaken because this will sustain you in any situation. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. 
only those who are in him will overcome like he did. From now on, give ear more to the voice of faith, because while the others pull you down, this one lifts you up. Every single day, the Let There Be Light program is sharing here real stories. People who, like you, suffered, they faced difficult moments in life, but from the moment they were humble to use their faith, not just saying they have faith, but from the moment they used their faith, their lives was transformed. And that's why they are here with us. They are coming and sharing with us what God has performed in their lives, like Vanessa. Her love life was transformed because she was using her faith. And she used her faith in the words of God, in the words that are written here. She believed in what was written here. And because of this today, she has a different life. If you go to your Bible and you find, you, you open in the book of Luke chapter 17, uh, since the verse uh, 11, we have uh, a message. Um, you know, a moment where 10 men who were sick with lepr leprosy, they came and asked Jesus for help. Uh, it says in the verse 12, then as Jesus entered the certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers, who stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. You can, I believe that you can, you can, you can see the picture, the entire picture of what was happening. Jesus comes into a village and these 10 men all together, they start asking for help. They were carrying in their bodies an incurable disease and they asked for help. And from here, we are already taking a lesson that we, so many times people, they say, where is God? that he doesn't see what I'm going through, what he is happening within my life. My dear friend, the right question is not where is God? The right question, it would be where are you? That's the right question you should ask to yourself. Where am I? Because these 10 men were leopard. The Bible doesn't say for how long they were suffered with this leprosy. But the Bible says that they were going through an incurable disease. But uh, no matter how severe and serious the problem was, they had to leave the place where they were. And they all, all together came not exactly close to Jesus because the law did not allow them to do such thing, but enough for Jesus to see them and enough for Jesus to hear them. And then they ask for help. And the verse 14 says something. So when he, the Lord Jesus, saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. Jesus tell, told them something very simple. They asked for help and Jesus go, and show yourself to the priests because the priest was the one who could testify and witness that they were well, they were freed from this sickness, they were cleansed. And Jesus did not pray, Jesus did not touch their bodies, Jesus, he did not do, you know, a, a religious ritual on that moment, Jesus has used the power of words, his word, and told them, go and present, show yourselves to the priests. And this same biblical verse says, and it was as they went, they were cleansed. Ah, my dear friend, these 10 men, they grabbed, they accept the word of Jesus. 
Nothing special was done. There was, no, there was nothing apparently with, you know, very euphoric that could, we could say it was something extraordinary that was done there on the spot on behalf of these 10 leopard men. No, Jesus just looked at them and when he saw them, told them, go and present yourself to the priest. And these men, they believed, and this is what I want to share with you. They believed in what Jesus said. They believed in the word that came out of Jesus' mouth. And then the 10 of them, they went on their way and they found on the way, on the way, going to meet the priest, they found themselves, them all, the 10 of them, completely cleansed from the leprosy that was destroying their flesh. Their action of faith, and pay attention, the action of faith of listening to the voice of Jesus, the words of Jesus, and saying, okay, he said for us to go, let's go. And they went. Maybe they did not know what was going to happen, the way that was going to happen, but one thing is granted. They did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They went on their way to meet the priest. And on the way, they found themselves. They, they've noticed they were completely healed from their leprosy. And my dear friend, I, I know that maybe you, you are crying because of your problem. You think that no one understands what is going on in your life. You think that you, you reach the rock bottom and there's no way for you to live the, or to find a way out from that pit that you find yourself in. Maybe you look at me at this very moment that you, t you are telling to your, your screen, ah, Ricardo, you do not have an idea of what I'm going through. And yes, maybe that's true. Maybe I do not know what you are, go what you are going through. But this doesn't make the word of God not being valid for you. These 10 leopard men who were carrying an incurable disease and not society, not medicine, not people, not the family, not those who love them the most. And at this moment, it doesn't matter if they were rich or poor, if they had uh, money, uh, resources or not, at this moment, they were desperate and there was nothing and no one that could help them. But one thing helped them, the word. They accepted Jesus' word and the moment they accepted, they practiced. And this is what you have to, to do. You have to use your faith upon the word of God. You have to use your faith. If the Bible tells us that these 10 men were, were, that were leopard and they were healed, you, you, may fe you may face a very difficult situation. Maybe your situation has nothing to do with leprosy. But my dear friend, it is written here that they were all healed. So it proves to me that whatever you are going through, once you are using your faith upon the word of God, your life can, yes, be transformed. Life is full of challenges. Is your love life one of them? Are you dissatisfied with it? Perhaps you are frustrated with the endless dramas. Unrequited love, marriages that fall apart, rejection, contempt, betrayal, the fear of being alone. Have you reached your limit? Do you want to give up on your love life? Does it seem to be one heartbreak after another? Wait, it is still possible to have a fulfilling love life. However, it is vital to transform your mindset before you can overcome anything. You can then have a fighting chance to conquer 
your happiness. Join us at the Love Therapy Seminar. Learn to love intelligently. What is behind so much destruction in your life? Instead of progressing, you're regressing. And you don't know what to do. So many losses. So many failures. Everything keeps going from bad to worse. Does it always seem like you're short on money? Did the person you love so much decide to leave and abandon the family? And that child who was once so calm but has now decided to rebel and turn to drugs. Are you scared to go to the hospital because every time you go, they find a new sickness and you're just waiting for that final blow, the one that tells you there's no more hope? Is your life at a standstill? UCKG.org.au is our website and you can find all the information that you, you need about what we are doing daily in the church. Or you can give us a call 0296029837. It's the number that is available for you who are desperate, for you who need an answer, for you who need to talk to someone or if you just need to ask anything about what we do uh, at Universal Church every single day. We are open every single day. Uh, the doors of our church are open all day long with an aiming one thing, that you see the fulfillment of God's words in your life. And thinking on it, we are going to have the week of It's Written that will start this coming Sunday. And that's why we are asking people to write on a paper. And I advise you for you to do exactly the same. For you to take a piece of paper and write there on the paper the problems that you are going through. The problems you know, in your marriage. The coldness that is growing between you and your spouse. The problems you are having with your children. The arguments, the fights. The distance that has been between you and the rest of your family, the incurable disease, the financial problems or the professional problems that you are going through, the inner problems that you are dealing with every single day. And until now, you couldn't find a solution for them. Write them on a paper. And this coming Sunday, come and unite your faith with us. We are going to use our faith upon what is written. As the 10 leopards, they accepted the word of God above all the words they have heard uh, so far. And we are going to use our faith upon what is written here. And here, my dear friend, it's written that Jesus saved families. Jesus healed those who were sick, set those who were possessed free. It's written here that Jesus came to give life and life in abundance. And we are going to pray in order for you to receive the fulfillment of these promises. For whatever is written here, through our faith, to happen in your life. So it's time for you to put an end to this suffering and join your faith with ours. We are going to help. We are going to help in the name of Jesus and through the word of God, we are going to help you in order to put an end, you know, a full stop to that suffering that you are going through. Let's prepare ourselves for the prayer. If you don't have, prepare a glass of water. And in a few moments, I'll be saying a prayer on your behalf. When we pray to God, 
we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring with me this person who, my Lord, in life they feel like these 10 leopard men. People, my Lord, who feel like they, they are contaminated because even those who should be there to help them, supposedly they should be there, my Lord, to be at least supportive they abandon this person. This person today looks at himself, herself, and see himself completely alone. I pray for this person who heard from the doctor saying that there's nothing else that can be done. This person who looks to his family and family is going down the drain, things are not going well. Those that he, he gave his life to, to give the best of himself, of a self, today are looking at them and saying, I hate you, or they are not even talking to them. This person, my Lord, who sees their financial and professional life being completely destroyed. This person who suffers with depression, with a deep anguish within him, my Lord, and there's nothing that this man has done, my Lord, that was capable of helping him and set him free from this anguish, this, you know, my Lord, this depression, Lord, touch this person's life now. Father, it is written, it is written that your name is above all names. So it doesn't matter what the name of this problem is. Touch this person's life and take this anguish, this oppression. Take, my Lord, this, my father, problem, this unhappiness away of this person's life and bring, O oh Lord, life. Bring transformation. Bring strength, my Lord. I bless this water, my Lord, and I determine that this water becomes holy in order, my Lord, to give this man and this woman the clarity they are in need of, the strength they are in need of to fight until the end and to overcome. My dear friend, drink of this water and receive the strength you need. Through this action of faith, Jesus helps, helps you with your needs. So why should I pay the price again? If He bore it all for me, He took the drink and bowed His head, and He spoke. Very well, we are reaching the end of our program and I'm sure that you have already within you at least a direction of what you can do. So no matter who you are, where you are, just take that step of faith. And even today we are with our doors open and we can help you. Our next service, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 7.30 p.m., the doors of the church are open. We have the prayer for the family today in all our churches at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. 
And 7.30 p.m. we have the Love Therapy, but the Love Therapy will be here in our headquarters, Liverpool, in Underwood, and also in Melbourne. But in all our branches, we have the prayer for our family. You can come using your faith in order for you to also re receive in your life the transformation that you you desire, but you will manifest your faith upon the word of God to see it real in your life. God bless you all. Have an excellent day. And tomorrow, the Let There Be Light program will be back at the same time. God bless you.